Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session, we are going to discuss about the next type of primary memory, the random access memory or RAM. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Now, during the session of introduction to primary memory, we learned that primary memory is actually of two types. The read-only memory or ROM and the random access memory or RAM. There, we also learned that the ROM basically stores firmwares and it happens to be non-volatile, which means even if we turn the power off, the data stored within remains intact. Whereas, on the other hand, RAM is volatile. That is, whatever is stored in RAM, once the power is turned off, it gets flushed. Since we have been studying about ROM in the last few sessions, Today, we will mainly focus on the RAM. Now, this random access memory, which actually is a temporary storage, is interfaced using these slots of motherboard. And these slots are called DIMMs or Dual Inline Memory Modules. Now, if we consider the architecture of RAMs, we can notice it has two independent rows of pins and this is why these slots are called dual inline memory modules or DIMMs. Now the total number of pins in RAMs can be 168, 184, 240 or 288. And on an average, modern motherboards have 2 to 4 DIMM slots. Now if you remember during the session introduction to memory, we learned that within each memory chip of RAM, there is a transistor and a capacitor. And we also learned that the transistor can retain binary bits as long as the associated capacitors have charge. So, periodic recharging is needed for value retention. And that is the reason why RAM is actually called Dynamic RAM or DRAM. Now, DRAMs are actually asynchronous and that is why they were discontinued when the next type of RAMs emerged. These are called SDRAMs, where S stands for synchronous. Now, why so? Because these run synchronously with the system clock and that is why these are way faster than basic DRAMs. In case of SDRAMs, due to the sync to the system clock, we can achieve efficiently controlled timing. Now, the storage capacity of DIMM SD RAMs range from 128 megabytes to 32 gigabytes, and they can transfer 64 bits in one clock cycle. Now, we all know one byte is 8 bits, so in other words, DIMM SD RAMs can transfer 64 divided by 8, that is, 8 bytes per clock cycle. And this is known as data path. So we can state DIMMs have 8 byte wide data paths. Now let me illustrate how we can decode a DIMM SD RAMs label. If you observe, on this label, PC100 is written, which implies that this particular SD RAM operates at 100 MHz frequency. And in the last slide, we learned that SD RAMs have 8 bytes of data path. Hence, the bandwidth of this particular RAM can be calculated as the frequency that it operates on, that is 100 MHz, multiplied by the data path, that is 8 bytes, which gives us 800 megabytes per second. So, it's pretty clear that this particular SD RAM can store 256 megabytes and it operates at the bandwidth of 800 megabytes per second. Now, consider this SD RAM. Here on the label, PC133 is written, which actually means that this particular RAM operates at the frequency of 133.33 MHz. Now, can you figure out the bandwidth of this one? Feel free to write down your answers in the comment section. By the way, let me give you a hint. The bandwidth will have to be obtained omitting the fraction part. Now, after DIMMs in the year 1999, another type of RAMs came into picture, 
These were called RIMs or Rambus Inline Memory Modules, RD RAMs. Here, RD stands for Rambus Dynamic RAMs. Now, these had the name like this because they were created by Rambus Incorporation. Now, RIM RD RAMs had a basic structural difference than DIMMs. That is, they had two bottom notches almost at the center of the module. Apart from this, RIMs had total 184 pins in them. Now, RIMs used to come with different operating speeds of 600, 700 or 800 megahertz. Now, if we consider the highest operating speed, that is 800 megahertz, it is actually way faster than DIMMs. Because DIMMs could only operate at the maximum speed of 133 megahertz. Now, coming to the data path, RIMs only had two bytes wide data paths, which is way lesser than DIMMs as they had 8 bytes wide data paths. So, the maximum bandwidth of RIMs was 800 megahertz multiplied by 2 bytes, that is, 1600 megabytes per second. So, RIMs became very popular momentarily, mainly because of their speed. However, due to the small data path, they were quickly replaced by the next type of RAMs, the DDR or Double Data Rate RAMs. These were the upgrades of DIMM SD RAMs. Now, as the name implies, DDRs can transfer double amount of data in each clock cycle. Let me illustrate. Let's take a non-DDR and a DDR RAM. Now, if we consider the clock signal, non-DDR transfers the data using only the positive level of the clock signal, whereas DDR uses both the positive and the negative levels of the clock signal for data transmission. And that is how it justifies its name. Now, DDR RAMs generally include both clock speed and bandwidth in their labels. And the total number of pins for DDR RAM is 184. Consider this DDR RAM. We can calculate its bandwidth as 333 MHz. That is the speed this one operates on. And where did we get this from? Here, DDR 333 multiplied by 8 bytes. Now, why 8 bytes? Because if you remember, DDR is the upgrade of DIMM SD RAMs. So, the total bandwidth can be obtained as 2700 megabytes per second. And notice that this is also mentioned on the RAM label itself. See, PC2700. So, yes, DDR RAMs include the clock speed, that is 333 MHz in here, and the bandwidth, that is 2700, in its label. Now, the next type is DDR2. Well, basically, it's faster than DDR, that means higher bus speed. Also, it has a total of 240 pins. Consider this DDR2 RAM. We can also figure out its bandwidth from its label itself. As we can see, it has the clock speed of 800 MHz and the data path is same as DDR, that is 8 bytes, which gives us a total of 6400 megabytes per second bandwidth. Notice that its bandwidth is also mentioned in the label itself, that is PC2 6400 and this 2 is for DDR2. Now, coming to the next one, it is DDR3. These are two times faster than DDR2 with a total number of 240 pins. Now, due to their architectural difference, these consume lesser power than DDR2. Consider this 4 gigs DDR3 RAM stick. If you notice, in this, the bottom notch is at different place than DDR2. Now, let's calculate the bandwidth. As you can see, it operates at 1600 MHz and it also has the same 8 byte wide data path which gives us 1600 multiplied by 8 that is 12800 megabytes per second which is clearly mentioned in the label as PC3 12800. 
Finally, the next type is the DDR4. These are basically twice as fast as DDR3, having a total of 288 pins. Also, these consume lesser power than DDR3. Consider this DDR4 RAM stick. On the label, it is mentioned that it has a speed of 4266 MHz. Hence, the bandwidth is 4266 MHz multiplied by 8 bytes, that is 34100 MB per second, which is also mentioned in the label itself. So, these are the various types of RAMs. Alright people, that will be all for this session. I hope that the different types of RAMs are clear to you now. In the next session, we will observe another numerical problem on primary memory. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.